Hi everyone, my name is Melissa and this is my first YouTube video. I have been saying that I'm going to create a writing YouTube channel for God knows how long. I'm finally doing it and my first video is going to be about my favorite genre, creative nonfiction. So the number one writing rule in general is show don't tell and what that means is really paint the picture but creative nonfiction it's kind of the love child between showing and telling because it's amusing on a certain story in your life and you're telling why the story matters to you because if the story didn't matter you wouldn't tell it so there are going to be some instances in the story where you are going to talk about why you're telling the story but i will get to that also with creative nonfiction, your prose is so important because for fiction the person might stick along for the story like for example i'm reading a novel right now about this girl who's um, she's getting catfished by this guy she's talking to and the prose, it doesn't excite me, but I'm invested in the story and I want to know how it ends. So that's the only reason I'm reading it. However, for creative nonfiction, people are going to stay for the writing. So I think in this genre more than fiction, compelling writing, it's like the most important part. Creative nonfiction is also a great genre for you to practice the art of writing because the more you practice telling stories, um, observations, details, the, mo the better a writer you'll become. And creative nonfiction, anyone can practice it because anyone lives. So if you live, you have stories to tell. So first off, you have to choose the story you want to tell. It doesn't have to be groundbreaking, like the time your parents got divorced or the time you were arrested. It doesn't have to be some crazy story. It can be, but you're telling the story because it was significant to you, regardless of how major the event was. So the reason I say it's a hybrid of showing and telling is because you're essentially going to tell them why you're telling the story. You're going to show the story with your details, but you can ingest some lines where you tell them why this event mattered to you. So the anecdote you choose is a moment in time that mattered to you for a specific reason. For example, you're not going to tell a story about the time you ate in a restaurant, unless, you know, you're telling a story because you saw a celebrity there or you went on a date. Something that happened in the restaurant really impacted you and that's the story behind it. So you need to pinpoint the reason you're telling a story because that's going to help you write it. If you don't know what your main goal is, you'll never get there. A successful piece of creative nonfiction shows the story but is also reflecting on it. You're reflecting on why this moment in time was significant to you. So to illustrate all the points I'm going to make, I have printed out two essays I've written on creative nonfiction. One is longer than, other, than the other, so I'm going to primarily focus on one of them, but I will allude a little bit to the longer one because I want to show you how these tips are universal for any piece of creative nonfiction. So the shorter one, the one I'm going to mainly focus on, is called The Time I Bought a $400 Purse. And then the other one is called, When I Learned What It Means to Be Cool. So the first step is to choose the story you want to tell, but you have to understand why you're telling it. So it doesn't have to be something groundbreaking or crazy, like um, maybe the time you were arrested or when your parents got divorced. It could be a seemingly insignificant moment in time, which is kind of what the first story I'm going to talk about is, the time I bought a $400 purse. However, even though it was insignificant, there's a reason I remember these stories. So, for example, you're not going to tell a story about, like, you pumping gas, but maybe you were at the gas station and then you ran into your high school crush, or you were at the gas station and you saw a homeless person and it really changed your perspective on certain issues. So, there needs to be a reason you're telling the story, otherwise you wouldn't even remember it because it's not important to you. So that brings me back to my introductory explanation of creative nonfiction because remember I said it's a hybrid of showing and telling because in fiction you're literally painting the picture and the audience is going to infer, you know, the theme, the morals. Remember when you're in high school and that was what English class was like. You would read a piece of fiction and you would have to write a report on, you know, what the author was trying to convey. However, since this is creative nonfiction, it's a story in your life and you're telling it for a reason. So when you show the story, you are also going to inject your reflection from today. So that's why it's a combination of showing and telling and also why you're not telling some insignificant story. It mattered to you. So 
you are going to let your readers know why. Now that you have your story and you know why you're telling it, time for the introduction. So I think that when you're in high school, teachers teach you to start out vague, like they teach you like a reverse pyramid model, but that is not the case for creative nonfiction. You are going to jump in the point of the story right away. So I will give you examples from my two essays. So when I was 19, I brought the $400 purse. And then the other one, when I was in high school, I wanted to be cool. So for both of those, that's literally what the story is about. I'm jumping into it right away because you don't want to bore your reader and you don't want to start with some useless cliche like you don't always get what you want. Life is full of surprises. I mean, you shouldn't use those at all, but you definitely should not start the story right away. So whatever your story is about, you are going to say that in the first line. That's going to set the scene and that's going to let the readers know what they're reading about. Okay, so you have your first sentence and now you're going to start telling the story. So that brings me to my next tip, and that is to add details. You want your readers to feel like they were on the journey with you. You have to paint the picture as vividly as possible. So that brings me to my next paragraph. So the one I started with, when I was 19, I bought a $400 purse. Then I went into, I had no business buying this purse or anything since I was a jobless, co I was a jobless college student diving deeper into student loan debt who rationed her minimal spending money for her cocaine and tequila pensions. So I could have just said, I shouldn't have bought this purse because I didn't have any money. However, by adding those details, now you have a better understanding of the type of person I was at the time by saying, you know, I spent the money on cocaine and tequila. And if I didn't have that detail, you wouldn't have that, you wouldn't have that understanding as you progress through the story. So in the next one where I said, I wanted to be cool, after I started the sentence saying, when I was in high school, I wanted to be cool, Next paragraph. In retrospect, there was nothing cool about the popular chicks, nor the town I grew up in where everyone applied to the same colleges and you were soon poor if your parents didn't buy you a car when you turned 17. Popular girls were especially uniform, done in juicy couture tracksuits, band girling over the latest Justin Bieber album, and dissecting Jersey Shore episodes like political theory. So without those details, you wouldn't have an understanding about the girls in my school and how they really weren't that cool, but how I perceived them to be cool at the time. And that detail is important because that's also going to be a theme. So the reason I'm talking about both of these essays is because you're going to realize that they're following the same formula. In both of them, I have my introductory sentence, which laid out what the story is going to be about. And then in both of them, the next paragraph, explain that sentence further. So what I also want to mention is that why detail matters, there has to be a reason you're sharing that specific detail because otherwise it's just going to clutter the story. The detail has to further explain the story or about you, the narrator, otherwise you don't need it. So for example, if your story takes place indoors, you don't need to say it was a beautiful sunny day, the sun was like shining bright. I mean, first of all, that's very cliche anyway, so don't talk about that. But either way, you don't need to say that. You only want to mention details that are relevant. So when we go back to my essay about the purse, I then continued. I was home on winter break. Aside from brawling with my parents, binge watching Shameless, and swiping on Tinder amongst the other students filling time between semesters, I didn't have much to do. So again, those details matter because I'm telling you what I was doing and why it was essentially nothing. It was me just killing time. And that's how I felt in the story which led me to buy the purse as I continue. You have to remember that most people have short attention spans and they don't think too fondly of reading. So if you're just adding details for the sake of having them, the story is going to be long and clunky and it's just going to bog down the meaning. So in the essay about the purse, I continued, so one day I drove to the mall. I drop a few dollars on an Auntie Annie's perfectly buttered pretzel, take a few dressing room selfies in provocative clothing I wouldn't buy. Again, did I need those details? Not exactly, but I don't think the story would have been as exciting if I just said I would go to the mall to kill time. You want to paint the picture. So whatever story you're telling, I want you to really remember what you were doing in that moment, how you felt before the main event of the story. Every detail that led up to it. So my next point in details and not overdoing them is you want your story to be clear and concise. We want to get rid of redundancy and phrases that we don't need. 
So, for example, if you say, um, I wanted to avoid my ex-boyfriend, so I ducked behind a potted plant. Wouldn't we have known that you wanted to avoid your ex-boyfriend if you said, I saw my ex-boyfriend, so I ducked behind a potted plant? You don't need to explain every single action. Because, again, when you're showing the story, the readers are going to infer why you did that. When I say telling, you're only telling like the meaning of why you're telling the story, but as for your actions, you don't have to justify your actions with why you did them. So my advice for keeping your story succinct is after each sentence, ask yourself whether this is progressing the story, whether that's because it takes you to the next event or because it provides more context clues about you, the narrator, or it's unnecessary. Like if you cut that sentence, would the story still read the same? You don't want your story to be superfluous. So for that reason, it might be helpful to have the outline to make sure you don't go off on tangents because if you're constantly looking at what the objective is, every sentence will contribute towards that. For example, another detail that contributed towards my objective, when I was in the store and I saw the $400 purse, I said, I slung the bag over my shoulder and studied myself in the full length mirror. The bag clashed with my sweatpants, unkempt hair, and puffy winter jacket. The bag clashed with me, but in the best way possible. So there, I am adding a detail that gives you more information about the narrator, and it's going to further galvanize me to buy the purse. So my next tip is to add personality. Because remember, this is not a school report, it's not an academic essay. It's called creative nonfiction as opposed to just nonfiction, as I said in the beginning, because it's supposed to be creative. Like, you can be quirky, eccentric, you can have, sorry, there's some dust on here. Feel free to use similes, um, metaphors, analogies that help you paint the picture better. It has to be entertaining. That's what's going to make people want to read it. So if it's dry and straightforward, it's not creative nonfiction. It's just nonfiction. Write the story as if you're telling it to a close friend. So don't write it to please any professors. This is your story and so it's going to have your personality. So with the story about the purse, another spot where I really like the detail I used, I talked about how I felt when I tried the bag on in the store. I said, I saw myself strutting through Manhattan, donning a chic beret and sweater dress. I saw myself in a steakhouse across from the love of my life who sported his own stylish button down and Rolex. I'd be riding in the elevator to my penthouse office in a steel gray business suit. I'd remove a magenta lipstick from the bag and glide it across my lips, freshening up for a staff meeting. When I arrived, I'd place the bag at my desk, all eyes centered on mine. I could still feel the suede underneath my fingertips. When I closed my eyes, I could smell it. My stomach fluttered My stomach fluttered every time I pictured the bag, more than when I imagined whichever frack way I had adulated at the time. My gut went from nudging me to buy the bag to imploring me. So again, I didn't just say, the bag was really pretty, and I felt cool when I wore it. I went into detail with the visions I saw when I tried the bag on. And like I said, that is all what motivated me to buy it. So if you don't paint the picture, your readers are not going to have the same experience as you did. And that's the purpose of creative nonfiction, for them to explore the journey with you. Okay, so after you tell your story, you're going to be at your conclusion. And the conclusion, this is the part that I will say is somewhat similar to when you were in high school because you're summarizing everything. However, it's not the same because you're not just going to restate the introduction, you know, when you're trying to like hit a word count, so you literally like reword the same sentences in the first part. Instead, the conclusion is where you have more liberty to tell rather than show. Because remember, you were supposed to have spent the entire story showing what happened. But now in conclusion, this is where you can do a little bit of telling. So for example, in the story I wrote about the bag, my ending paragraph, I said, I don't know what I expected to happen after I handed the cashier my money and she handed me the purse, delicately wrapped in tissue paper and free people's eco-friendly gauze-like shopping bags. Perhaps the moment felt anticlimactic. I was the same confused and chaotic college girl I'd been prior, except now with an expensive handbag. I didn't regret the purchase, though. The bag felt like magic. When I wore it, I felt like I, too, could be magic. I didn't know who I was or if I could ever amount to anything, but when I wore the bag, I felt like I could be something. So there, there was a lot of telling in this paragraph because I'm telling you, like I am summarizing basically why I bought the bag, but I showed you that earlier with the visions I saw of myself and I showed you who I was before. So in the end, 
my final sentence. When I wore the bag, I felt like I could be something. And then in the other story I wrote when I wanted to be cool, I, I didn't go through the details, but basically the whole story is about how I met this girl who was cool, but she wasn't popular. So in my ending paragraph, I said, Olivia's confidence mesmerized me in a way the popular girls didn't. It's easy to be confident when everyone likes you. Olivia's confidence hinged upon her liking herself, even if nobody else did. She didn't fit in our school's hierarchy because she was too cool for it. She couldn't be classified above or below anyone. Olivia was cool because she simply didn't care. And something else that also fits into the formula of these essays and creative nonfiction is that the first sentence should kind of read in tandem with the last one. And I'll show you what I mean. When I, so, for the purse story, when I was 19, I bought a $400 purse. My final sentence, I didn't know who I was or if I could ever amount to anything, but when I wore the bag, I felt like I could be something. So, if you literally read those together, that's kind of what the story is about. I mean, it's like a sandwich. Those are the pieces of bread, and then the whole story is the meat, the vegetables, inside. But you could just read those two sentences and understand the point of the story. And then with the other one... When I was in high school, I wanted to be cool. The final sentence, Olivia was cool because she simply didn't care. And again, those go together. Whereas I wanted to be cool, this girl didn't care. And that's what made her cool. So I want you to, after you write your conclusions, make sure that the first sentence and the last sentence make sense if you just read them by themselves with each other. So finally, when you finish your essays, the next step is to edit. However, I recommend writing a piece of creative nonfiction over the course of like two to three days, even if you write it all in one day, don't edit it in that hour. Look at it the next day because your perspective is going to change. It's still fresh if you edit it right after, so you might not observe details that you wouldn't have, a, that you would notice the next day when you take time away. But also you shouldn't be compelled to even write the whole story in one day. And my philosophy is if you feel stuck, I, I think you should work through it, but if the writer's block is not budging, take time away and think about it. Because for me, something I say is that I'm always writing. Even when I'm not writing, I'm still doing it just by how I'm observing and thinking about everything that I will eventually write. So the physical act of writing is what everyone thinks of when they, they hear the word writing, but it's a lot more than that. Because also with these pieces, they're my reflections from today. So I, I couldn't have written them within the time that I wrote them. I don't want the video to get too long, so I'm going to end it here. I will also link a few creative nonfiction essays that I really enjoyed, aside from the ones I wrote. So the more you study the genre, the more you read, the better a writer you'll become. But anyway, I hope this was useful. I hope I got my points across. I was a little nervous. This is my first video, so hopefully I'll get better in time. And comment below if you have any questions. And also, I want to hear your stories. I want the juicy, embarrassing, intimate details because, like I said, I love creative nonfiction. It's my favorite genre to read, so give me the tea. And also comment below if you have any other questions or ideas for future videos. I hope you enjoyed this, and I will see you in the next one.